It might be harder for you to get some of your favorite items at the grocery store. A worldwide supply chain problem is leading to empty shelves at local grocery stores. The owner of Almstead's Fresh Market in Crystal says they're running low on some products. And reporter Sonia Gowen shows us what's behind the supply shortage and how it could impact consumers. This aisle has been a problem. Jim Almstead, owner of Almstead's Fresh Market in Crystal, says he's having a hard time keeping some items on store shelves these days. And this is where all of our box drinks should be, and we just can't get any. Water, pop, and juice are in short supply. This just all got filled up today. Uh, one of the other things that happens is if we order 50 cases of something, uh, we might only get 20 of it. The snack section is looking sparse too in some spots, especially Frito-Lay's products. Well, it's football season, so it comes back to demand again. People eating pop and chips, they can't keep up with supplies. A few aisles over and customers are hard pressed to find canning lids. My lids for canning. I can't find them anywhere. In August, Amstead put a limit on how many canning lids customers can purchase, and they quickly sold out. Well, I've been told that they are running, um, there is no aluminum, there's a shortage. Financial experts say there are several reasons for the backlog. There's a material and labor shortage. And to make things worse, there's not enough truck drivers to get items to the store. As you can imagine, that makes it pretty hard to keep some items in stock. Some customers are noticing a difference in their wallets. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, food prices have gone up 3.4% over the last year. Some shoppers say it pays to shop around for good deals. I usually get the point to house steaks at reasonable prices and uh, I get them on sale for seven or eight dollars or I have they're up to 14 15 dollars a pound. Meanwhile Ofsted says the supply chain is also impacting his overall bottom line but things aren't as bad as they were as at the height of the pandemic. If you don't have it you can't sell it if you can't sell it you can't uh, you know get the money to pay your bills. In Crystal, Sonia Goins, CCX News. Chances are you know someone with Alzheimer's or another form of dementia. The Alzheimer's Association says 50 million people worldwide are living with the disease, and some of those people are grandparents and loved ones. Today on Newsmakers, we talk about how you can talk to your kids about Alzheimer's with Right at Home's Kristen Canny. There's 6.2 million Americans this year that ha are struggling with Alzheimer's, and so it's very prevalent and it's probably going to show up in the child's life. So it helps them understand what's going on, it helps them not be afraid of their grandparents, and it also helps them as they're aging to understand things that can happen and maybe help prevent it in the future. All right, now Kristen, you own a company in Plymouth called Right at Home. What, it, what do you guys do? We do in-home care for seniors, so that's mainly companionship care, but we do go into the home, um, single, uh, single family home or community, and um, do different services that make their lives better as they're aging. All right, now when we talk to our kids about a loved one with memory loss, what should we say? What should we talk about? Well, the first thing to do is remember your own behavior. Anything that you're doing with your, as an adult child with your parent is going to be mimicked by the child. So you wanna make sure that you don't correct them. You wanna redirect to different conversations. You're not telling them they're repeating themselves. You wanna keep everybody comfortable. The more frustrated you get with your parent, the, the child sees that. Um, but when we're going to actually talk to them, honesty, we want honesty is the best policy. Be age appropriate but do have an open and honest discussion about what's going on so they understand that. Uh, be direct and clear. You do need to explain this is a brain disease and it's not going to get better, it's not curable, it could get worse, but it's nothing that they did, it's not contagious. In fact, more than ever, they need to be spending time with their grandparents and ac activities such as household chores are great, doing the dishes, setting the table, uh, companionship, doing puzzles, playing cards, watching the game uh, is, is good. And then. And then if something uncomfortable happens or might be a little bit scary to the child, it's a good to talk about that as well. Absolutely. Uh, they're going to be shocked when granddad doesn't remember they, who they are one day and they need to be aware that that can happen and maybe granddad remem remembers them the next day. So, um, And sometimes things can happen, mood changes, behavior changes, things like that, and they need to be aware that that's, that can happen and it has nothing to do with them. It's nothing, nothing that they did. And kind of a long-term effect of this is really encouraging empathy in that younger generation. 
Yeah, so they know they know how to they understand what their dad granddad's going through. They need to understand that, you know, granddad, grandma are they're scared too. They don't know what's going on with their bodies and it helps them understand and be able to cope with the situation better. All right. And if someone needs more information, where should they look to for help? Definitely the Alzheimer's Association website. They have a ton of information there about the about the dis disease. Yes. All right. Kristen Canny, it's a good topic. Thank you for being with us today from Thank Plymouth you. Right at Home. Thank you so much. Students from District 279 who are studying the Hmong language wrote a special book. My students are uh, publishing their fourth book called My Love, My Life, which is a, um, a series of um, love stories from their parents that they interviewed. An event in Centennial Park celebrated the new book, which will share how students' parents met, what made them say I do, and advice for Hmong youth. This is the fourth book collaboration that teacher Peng Yang created with her students in her Hmong language classes, all with the help of a grant. All students will get a free copy and this last week a chance to celebrate at the Zhejiang event in Brooklyn Center. There's another book called Beyond the Color of Our Skin that will be coming out before the end of the year. And kids aren't the only ones dressing up for Halloween anymore. The National Retail Federation says 20% of consumers dress up their pet for the holiday too. We'll leave you now with a few examples of costumes our canine friends at the Animal Humane Society in Golden Valley will be sporting this Halloween. The regular season is in the books now for local high school football teams. One of the big success stories in the area is the turnaround for the Park Center Pirates. Their quarterback, Marcus Freeman, is featured in this week's CCX Sports Spotlight. It's been the kind of season they dreamed about. For Park Center quarterback Marcus Freeman and his teammates, to go from back-to-back -back winless seasons to a 7-1 and one regular season this fall is pretty special. It's been real fun for us. We're just enjoying having that winning culture here, and coming out every day and being able to work and look forward to the next challenge ahead. And as the quarterback and three-year starter, Freeman has been front and center on the Pirates' rise. This young man has matured before our eyes. Couldn't be happier, couldn't be prouder of him. He's taken on a leadership role, and now we put all the pieces together from last November and now, and this young man is hitting his stride, and sky's the limit for him. It's a whole group of guys that, like Marcus, withstood some tough times to improve the Pirates program. And covered by the Pirates. And now they're seeing the rewards of that work. They've seen their quarterback take a big leadership role. Marcus has been a, a great impact on my life. I've been playing with him since my freshman year. We've been tight. He's a great person to hang out with. I don't think people understand, like, Mark has been working his butt off this whole summer. Every single receiver you see around here, we all go with them. He'll throw the ball, work on his throwing technique. So everything he's been doing this season, it didn't just come out of nowhere. Mark has been working his butt off to get where he's been right so far. Freeman entered Park Center's last regular season game having completed 56% of his passes for 1,326 yards with 18 touchdowns. His talent was evident early, but as a sophomore starter two seasons ago, things weren't always pretty. To see his game elevate has been fun. It feels different, like the game come a lot slower to me now. Everything's just falling into motion is much easier. I'm less nervous than I was sophomore year and junior year. I just feel real poised and real comfortable. He's seeing the field right, he's reading coverage the right way, he's throwing guys wide open. Making the throw before the guy is, you know, open, throwing them open and then guy catches his stride and there's been a lot of touchdowns this year. Park Center's offense has been a great mix of run and pass too. Micah Hoban entered game eight with just under 800 yards rushing, while six different receivers are in double digits and catches. Balance is a good thing. That's real important because then it sets up for play action, of course, and getting everything else open so it makes sure everybody on our team gets to eat. Now the playoffs are ahead. Park Center's in Section 6-5A with proven strong teams like Rogers and Spring Lake Park. It's fair to say the competition will be a step up from the regular season for Marcus Freeman and his Park Center teammates. It's a chance to show that they really have gotten a lot better. We're looking forward to it a lot. We're really excited to see what the challenges come ahead and seeing our bigger um, teams that we're able to face 
and just getting to play new people that we haven't necessarily play, played in the past. Dart down the middle of the field and it's a completion. And it's a first. We remind ourselves every day that watching film or after practice, let everybody know we have to be humble because no team will play that, we'll, that we're going to play in playoffs will be like we played in regular season. The Pirates are in Section 6-5A for the upcoming playoffs and are the number two seed, earning them a bye into the semifinals Saturday, October 30th. Thanks for watching CCX Sports. I'm Jay Wilcox. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.